When it comes to making games inside of Arma 3D and any game engine in general, you really want to have a good player controller, but more importantly you want to be able to move that player controller into different levels, different scenes, to be able to travel throughout all these different worlds that you might have in your game. Well, to do this we have a basic player controller. You can see I have this sample scene right here, you can download it from the link in the description if you want to follow along. Essentially what we want to do is we want to create multiple levels. So let's go up here to the scene tab and create a full copy of this scene. So now we have two scenes that are identical copies. Now what we can do first of all is, what well, you can see we have the first scene so we need a way to switch between it. So let's go ahead and add a scene trait. This trait is only going to show up in that specific scene tab. It's not going to show up in the other scene. And what we're going to do here is we're going to create a space key and we're going to trigger the uh, transition to scene number two uh, with that space key. Now we've added in a few blocks to differentiate them. You can see this is level one, we have some blocks, and then when we press space, we transition to level two. But we can't move, we're, we're stuck, we're isolated. And the reason for that is very interesting. See, if we delete all the camera and all the collision box and create a new scene trait in scene number two, this is gonna be specific for scene number two, but we can add it to scene number three, scene number four, anything but scene number one. And here we're going to create an uninitialized node and we're going to spawn the scene. Now the scene we're going to spawn is going to be the player scene because what we want to do is we want to spawn this uh, player controller into all these different scenes. So firstly, obviously we need to remove everything that's in scene number one, everything except the player controller. So the only thing that's going to be spawned in is this single player controller and the collision box obviously, which is going to be accompanied with its script. So we're going to have our player being spawned into whatever scene we want. So that's a great way of making this work, however there are a few issues. You can see here we don't actually have an active camera so we need to sort that out in this script. So we have here a hierarchy of our object and the root object is obviously our collision mesh because that's the main object and the other one is parented. So to get that camera we actually need to get the child of that parented object which is the root of our scene. So we can get the object child node and plug it into the root. So it's going to look at that collision mesh and go down to the parented object so we can set it to start with as in what does the uh, name start with and we can see it's player underscore camera all in capitals and so it's going to look for that object and it's going to set that to be the active camera. And as we play this you can see that we have the camera set to be active and we spawned in the collection of the player into the collection of our scene of our level over here. So yeah we have an active moving camera around and then you can actually just do the same script and apply the same script to all the other scenes that you might have so it will constantly spawn in the camera uh, when the level starts of each of these uh, objects. Now it's good to remember that the object is actually spawned at the transform where it was in the previous scene so you do have the possibility to add a custom transform position for example add some empties in the scene and uh, use those to be a spawn point. However for right now that's fine. There is a slight issue. You see when we go to the browser and run this on the browser it doesn't run as smoothly as before. You see there's a delay where there's a default camera that shows the scene from an outside view because we still have a default camera that's packed in here because we're only setting the active camera later on once we've executed the script. So we do have a slight issue to fix and therefore this method is not ideal for browser games. However, there's a second and more practical method that I recommend you using and that is to actually modify and figure out why this issue is actually happening. Why can't we just add a camera into the scene and have it run and play in all the different levels normally? So let's go back to our basic scene and you can see here we have our player object which has a script which is the camera controller. Now this camera controller is essentially working fine in this level, however as soon as we switch to level number 2 by pressing space, everything freezes up. Now the reason is because the objects that are in Armour 3D each have their own name. You can see up here we have the player underscore body and when we go to this level, uh, number 2, we have player underscore body dot zero zero one. Now that's an issue. You see, every time we create a new copy or create a new scene, the different objects are incremented. However, we're referencing those objects inside that trait as being the ones from the original scene, scene number one, or more like level zero. Now, we can go ahead and modify this by essentially removing those objects. You see, this node tree is an object trait, meaning this whole thing is attached to our player object. So by default, that is the object that all these things are applied to if there's no object defined in these uh, little boxes. Then by default, it's going to apply all these different things to the object that it's hosted to. However, there are a few issues. You see, we have some nodes that are referencing the camera. Now, that's a problem because 
we need to go ahead and use the same method of getting the object child. And the object is obviously the uh, player controller, which is obviously going to be blank, and we need to set it to a name that is obviously the player uh, camera. Uh, so once we have this, we're going to plug it into everywhere where we have the camera, and it's going to look for that object. And even if the camera is incremented, it's still going to look at that and see, okay, it contains player underscore camera, and any additional uh, material, any additional numbers or things like that, it's just going to ignore, it's just going to say, yeah, I know that that's what he means. And there we go, now we have a working player controller that is adaptive for all these types of scenes, and now you can see we're in scene number two, and we're moving around just as easily. Now, the reason this is uh, an issue that you need to take into account is also, when using uh, this for a browser game, it doesn't have any issues, you see, it goes directly into that camera, and there's no real delay. Now, one thing there is, is I see a slight delay because we're changing scenes, and that is something that's quite a resource intensive, which is why people usually have loading screens. So, we're going to talk more about color grading and loading screens to accompany this sort of method in the next video. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you learned a lot, and see you again someday.